Welcome back to Sportsa. Uh, in today's episode, we're gonna use strength training so that we can be more explosive, so that we can jump higher. All right, y'all ready to go to the gym? Here we go! And we've arrived at the gym. I got my coffee, so I'm all excited. So today, again, as I mentioned, we're gonna be working on explosiveness. Now, the thing about the last uh, episode where I was like working on my vertical jump, I noticed that when I was work, uh, that when I was doing all the squatting, I got up to 315, and 315 was very challenging for me. So that was an indication that I don't have quite the leg strength that I thought that I had. So I need to make sure that I work on it. And part of the explosiveness that I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna be working on volume in that aspect. So I'm a little bit disappointed that I'm not squatting as much as I did before. So I really need to make sure that I get a lot of volume during this series. I need to make sure that I work on volume. Plyometrics is gonna be later on in the week. So right now my ratio of strength training to plyometrics is two to one. So there's gonna be two days where I'm doing strength training and one day where I'm doing plyometrics to try and get better. The first thing that I'm gonna do is gonna be, let's check the agenda. Yay! Squats! All right, so the first thing that I wanna work on is my warm up. And when I'm doing my warm up, I always start out with the bar as you've seen in previous videos. And I'm here, I'm doing 10. And the reason why I'm doing 10 is just so I get my mind and body all in one connection by just keeping moving. And the reason why I go really depth, like really deep in it is because you really wanna work on depth when you're working on barbell squat, especially if you're trying to increase your vertical. Me going this deep, I'm able to see how much an effect my ankle mobility is in this case. So I have to make sure that I stretch my calves because my calves are gonna be critical in my squat. I always have to make sure that I get my Achilles a full stretch, especially if I'm doing something that requires it to have to be activated. The Achilles is the strongest tendon in your entire body and that's why it's very critical. All right, so now that we got a nice good warm up going, let's actually start putting on the weight and get those sets going so that we can get our vertical leap higher. All right, let's go. Alright, so now that I'm finally warmed up, got that 135, did my 10 reps, nice and warmed up. I'm actually going to jump up to 225. If you're at home, I suggest that you actually jump to 185 if you're trying to get to 225. But the reason why I'm doing 225 is because I already know what my threshold is and in terms of my strength, I'm able to handle 225. Now this next set, I'm doing 225. 10 to 12 reps. The reason why I'm doing 10 to 12 reps is because I'm working on muscular endurance. This is going to be very important because if you're dunking or trying to get your vertical up is that it's going to, just jumping is going to take a lot out of your muscles. So that's why we have to work with a higher volume and make sure that we're working on muscular endurance. So that's why I'm aiming for four sets. But the first set, I'm going to be doing 10 to 12 reps. Then the second set, I'm going to do six, uh, eight to 10 reps. Then the third set, I'm going to do six to eight. And then if I'm able to do the fourth one, I'm going to do four to six reps and the reason why I'm aiming for this again is like I'm gonna slowly tire out my quads because quads is the most imp uh, most important muscle especially in this exercise because it's a squat and it's quad oriented you already know about it so now let's get to it and get these reps in all right here we go
start getting fatigued, the first thing that goes is your form. So when I'm going down, I'm making sure that my big toe stays up. It's called dorsiflex. Basically, all it activates is the muscles in front of your tibia or in front of your shins because these are the muscles that are responsible for absorbing the force when you're landing. So especially if you're like coming down, the thing that's important, that's why when you do box jumps, you wanna lift your toes up and land on your heels because then that's what allows the muscle, the tibialis anterior, the front one, to actually absorb the force and protect your knee because the knee is not structured to be able to handle that type of load or in that position. So that's why a lot of times they tell you you want to be careful when you land on the balls of your feet. So that's why I'm lifting my big toe up every time I go down. All right, so let's get that force set in because now that I'm feeling good, I feel I can get that force set in. And I'm just doing four to six reps and then we're going to go on to the next exercise. Now go to the next muscle, which is calf raises. I'm actually focusing on the gastrocnemius. Gastrocnemius is the top muscle in your calves. And if you look at basketball players, they tend not to have big calves at the bottom, they tend to have it at the top. So that's where a lot of the power is gonna be coming from. Key here with these standing calves is you don't wanna pick a weight that's too heavy for you. Because if you pick a weight that's too heavy for you, you're gonna do what you're not supposed to do when you're working on calves. If you saw my pre, if you saw a video I did two videos ago where I was getting back into shape, one of the things that I wanted to work on was my calves. When I was seated on the, when I was on the seated calves, I made sure that at the bottom I count one to two, three seconds, so that I make sure that I get that tension because that's also how you're able to eliminate the momentum that you're gonna start doing on this exercise, especially if you're trying to cheat and get the reps in. So you want to make sure that you pick a weight that's not too heavy. I almost picked up a 40 pounder and I could tell that that was just going to be entirely too heavy especially for the amount of volume that I'm doing. So now I'm going to go to a much lighter weight, probably do around 30 pounds and then I'm going to make sure that I count one to two seconds at the bottom before I jump right back up. Alright so here we go. Clearly there, I found my way, it's gonna be 30 pounds. Even that's gonna be really hard right now. I'm really fatigued, so that's probably why I was in it. Uh, that's probably why I was able to just get 10. Again, if you see here in this, I made sure that I count one to two seconds. The thing that you don't want to do is just do continuous back and forth, jumping up and down, because then you're using the momentum to cheat to go back up. What you wanna make sure is again, you wanna pick a weight that's doable, comfortable for you, and then you want to aim 10 to 15 reps. Because I'm a little bit fatigued, I'm only able to get to 10. So right now my calves are already burning and that was the first set, there's two more to go. All right, let's do it.
I actually bend my knee. So when I bend my knee, I'm actually able to get that Achilles tendon stretched. Achilles tendon, even though it's the strongest tendon in your body, you really don't want to tear your Achilles. I've, I've ruptured my entire Achilles before and that's part of the reason why my calf is so small. So I'm always self-conscious about making sure that I stretch it because it's important to stretch because otherwise you run the risk of injury. So while you're doing these, yeah, it's important to stretch your calves, but also it's important to stretch your Achilles tendon. So how you do that is making sure you bend your knee when you're in a calf stretch as I do here. The sets are getting harder, obviously because I'm fatigued. On this one, as you can tell, man, my left calf is small, and that's because of the previous injury. But when I finish, because my calves are really tight, I make sure to still stretch them because I just finished doing the squats and then doing the calf raises is also gonna make it to where it's still like your calves are having to work a lot. And man, my calves feel good. Unlike the other day, my calves were burning. This time, like they're not burning, but I can definitely tell the pump. Check me out. Look at that. Look at that gastronemus. That is nice and plump. All right, so now that we're done doing standing calf raises, now we're gonna go to another exercise. And again, if you have noticed, all of this stuff is working along an area that we call posterior chain. So I'm now about to actually go do some hamstrings. And then after I do the hamstrings, I'm gonna do some glute exercises. And I always do these exercises called reverse hypers. But right now, the first thing that I'm gonna go to is I'm gonna do some Romanian deadlifts. And the reason why I'm doing Romanian deadlifts is so that I'm able to target that hamstring. My hamstrings are probably my weakest points because my quads are very strong. So, because even earlier when I was squatting, my hamstrings started to get a little bit tight, I'm actually gonna make sure that I lift heavy, but also I don't wanna push it in terms of volume because I don't wanna get injured. If I get injured, it's gonna deter my progress along these series. So, the whole process is to, you wanna make sure that you get to the finish line. This is a marathon, not a sprint. A lot of times people wanna get to that finish line immediately. What you wanna do is pace yourself, and as long as you're making consistent gains and staying consistent with your workouts, nutrition, and everything else, and rest, you're gonna be just fine. All right, so here we go. Let's do some Romanian deadlifts. When you're setting up Romanian deadlifts, especially with a platform, as I'm setting up here, first thing you wanna make sure, you wanna make sure you get the height. So what helps for me is I walk up to the bar and then I figure out if it's near, if it's like, what I do is I first set up a platform. Once I've set up the platform that, that I'm gonna be standing on when I do these Romanian deadlifts, because the thing that is you're actually gonna be getting it to where you get a full stretch of your hamstrings the, the entire time. So you're trying to go as far as your hamstring will let you go. Now, first thing that I do is I set up the platform. Once I know the platform that I'm actually gonna stand on, I actually test it by standing on it and walking up to see where the bar is. If the bar is already below my knees, it's far too low. So what I wanna make sure is that it's just right above my knees so that when I pick it up, it's not too much of a descent when I, it's, so that when I pick it up, I'm not already stretched with my hamstrings. Cause what you wanna do is you wanna pick it up at the top and then when you're bringing it down, you wanna get a full stretch of your hamstrings. After you figure out where your height is and you figure out exactly what platform you're gonna use because I'm going for my hamstrings and I'm trying to make sure that I hit them with a heavy weight. I'm going for four, four to six reps. So the weight that I decided to do, which is gonna be a lot of weight on my hamstrings, is 225. So when I'm doing 225, again here I'm aiming four to six reps and I'm probably gonna do two to three sets and that's gonna be about it. If you're doing Romanian deadlifts, you want to go as far as your hamstrings will let you, but also you have to maintain form. Now, the key to maintaining form, especially on a deadlift, is that you want to make sure that you have a big chest and you're pulling your shoulders back because that's what's allowing your back to stay rigid so that you don't end up 
curving your lumbar spine, <laughs> like curving, curving your back in the lumbar spine area, which is that lower back, and that's why, that's why you run the risk of injury. And especially because considering the amount of volume that we've done, you're gonna be fatigued, and you don't want to slip up on form because that's how you end up in Snap City and end up injuring yourself. And you don't want to injure yourself. Don't want to snap your back, you gotta stay healthy because we want to make progress over the long term, not the short term. Because the short term, that's how you end up with injuries. Now it's gonna be on to the final thing and that is gonna be reverse hypers. And reverse hypers, this is just another additional thing that I do to increase my hip mobility, which is gonna be important in terms of developing that rate of force development, which is important for athletes, especially if you're trying to dunk or increase your vertical jump. Okay, so let's go to the machine now. Now where you wanna position yourself when you're doing this is you wanna make it to where your hip area or where your, yeah, yeah, where your hips are, are directly right above the padded area. Now because this is a semi-circle pad, it's a little bit difficult to figure out exactly where you're comfortable, but if you're feeling any pain in your lower back, you're probably too far off one direction or the other. So you wanna find just a simple spot. There's a video where I did before where you actually have a reverse hyper stand and that's a, those are usually flat. So where you wanna find yourself, if you have one of those in your gym, is going right up to it and then where your hips are that's where you want the edge of the reverse hyper to end because let's recap basically what i did so the first thing because we're trying to work on explosiveness today i wanted to make sure that my squats are much more explosive but one of the ways that you do that is you have to make sure that you hit the volume because the quads are going to be very important and so how you get the quads stronger is you have to hit volume so the volume that i aim for today is I, I made sure that my sets, I was making sure that I was lifting a pretty decent amount of weight and doing a lot of repetitions for it. So I did about four sets where a minimum I was doing four reps on each one of them. So that's a minimum of 40. If I do this twice a week, then I'm actually gonna be able to get my hypertrophy going and I'm gonna get my muscles a little bit bigger and they're gonna be much more explosive. Now the second thing, that I went to was calf raises. When you're doing standing calf raises, again, you wanna make sure that you pause at the bottom so that you can get that full stretch and get that muscle tension. That's what's critical about this exercise. And again, because you could tell my calves are not that strong, team no calves, but I'm trying to get that better. And the reason why we did standing calf raises is because we're able to target the gastronemus. If you look at a lot of basketball players, when you see the ones that are like dunking and stuff, they don't have massive calves or anything like that. They actually, their calf muscles, you can tell it's at the very top. That's where the gastronemus is. So that's the area that I wanted to focus on um, when it came to calf raises today. And then the third exercise that I ended up doing was Romanian deadlift. I like deadlifts just because they're a good compound exercise. Now Romanian deadlifts, I like just because they get a good hamstring stretch and putting it on a platform as I did there, it allows me to where I'm able to get that full stretch, but also be safe. So if I need to rack it up, I just walk up a little bit further. So just practice exactly where the height is. I was fine with just having it to where the bar was on my knees when I'm standing on the platform and I walk up to it. But as long as you get it just right above your knees, it should be good because then you don't have to reach too far down just for that beginning position. Because the reason when you're doing your Romanian deadlifts, you want to get that full stretch. And again, you want to make sure that your form is good. So you want to pull your shoulders back, have a big chest so that you get that full raise. Now, after we did Romanian deadlifts, the final thing was reverse hypers. And those reverse hypers, I think, uh, definitely did it for me. Uh, now I'm fully, I'm really, really exhausted. And the next thing is I need to make sure that I get my rest and I need to make sure that I get my nutrition. So far, all right, so. And then now that I'm done doing glutes and it kicked my butt, now I need to make sure that I refuel, get the right amount of protein so that we can build this muscle and get the amount of carbs so that I can refuel and recover so for my next workout. On my next workout, I plan to actually work on plyometrics because that's the next phase of this, uh, that's the second thing that I do each week. And then the third thing is gonna be another strength training. Now, because we decided to work on strength training and the focus was mainly a lot of volume on the quads, the next time I'm gonna be focusing more on the hamstring, glutes, and also doing more plyometric stuff. All right, now time for me to go to Flame Roller and get my grub on. Here we go!
All right, so we're here at Flame Broiler. I ended up getting my chicken and making sure that I get veggies in. And it's not too many calories. I think it's around 600 calories. I gotta check with that. Yeah, my man over here. So now that we're done, the next video, we're gonna be talking about plyometrics and it's gonna be an interesting one. So if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Yeah. Man, tell me over here, we're just gonna go eat because I'm a very messy eater and I don't want y'all to see this. So I'll catch y'all next time here on Sports Side. Ciao.